activity you can stop that at once. My name is Paul Wadey. I was diagnosed with autism at the age of 41 about 10 years ago. I've been working for the National Autistic Society for over nine years since then, doing a lot of different things like training, teaching meditation to other autistic people, and thinking a great deal of myself. I wrote a book, which is full, well, you're going to find out why, um, which is full of social skills for autistic people. It's, it's called Gerard Raspi, the Neurotypical Infiltration Manual. Whoops, I have timed myself in order to find out how long my glory has been. Um, and it's full of stuff that you're not supposed to teach autistic people. Manipulation, seduction, bullying, coercion, all those skills that define you as autistic people. Not that you never admit to it. Uh, so this is the uh, first 15 minutes of the Edinburgh show, or until I get stopped in the section, which is attempting to orient a lot of you into actually being Aspies, which is a slang term for Asperger's syndrome, which I consider to be a snob term, as we shall see. The first thing you need to know is you don't actually need to be in the theatre. You can leave, you can play with your phones, you can talk to yourself. It's fine. <laughs> because if you embrace true neurodiversity, as we call it, as opposed to neurotypicals, which is what I assume virtually all of you are, or NTs, as we uh, refer to you, please, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, yeah, we're very self-contained. Autism means selfism. So don't worry about the show. I'll just talk about the last one. Newton, you see, uh, has been appropriated by our... Uh, community. Um, he once did a, a science talk in Cambridge and nobody came. But he did it anyway. So if you look, this is the truth. That's why we think he's autistic. It's the same for me. I'll just do this on my own. I love it. Okay, this is as I've defined a heckle friendly show. By all means, say anything you like during it. Interrupt me. Ruin the whole thing. Let me find it all. You can embrace the ethos, but be aware of the consequences. I do come from Liverpool and I am autistic. And that's like, yeah, the mercy. Okay, so we've got a few basic terms. Autism, a form of brain profile, type or structure that defines a subset of humanity. Oh, a minority. People who have autism have empathy and relate to each other's maturity. The nature is a part. It's a fact, I tell you. We've got a friend from Israel who comes to stay with us in England who's going off to live in Finland. That's what it's like. We've got mates from all over the planet on the spectrum. You wouldn't believe what's going on out there. It is a huge subset of our kind. A lot of us don't even know we're autistic. I didn't know. I got diagnosed, as I say, in a four-hour session, at the end of which we actually diagnosed my father as well. <laughs> Wonderful. My wife didn't know until she was diagnosed at the same age as me, which is how we met and married. Wonderful. Our eyes <laughs> met so across a twitching room. She said, I don't care. I said, no, do I? <laughs> we married within two years, and we don't have anyone around the house. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, we obviously see this disabled, having a disorder, retarded, or mentally. Well, that must be pretty obvious from me. This is due to always being compared to normal. See, it's all relative, you see. We are just like gay people. They, it's not a perversion. It's not a normal. It's how you're made. Aspies! People who are autistic or have Asperger's syndrome, usually good at neurotypical impersonation. That's what defines you from being autistic. It's a snob term. It's like being a gay man and saying, well, I'm, I'm really straight, I'm, I'm really butch, I'm not camper, and you've got loads of female friends. No, you're just autistic and, you know, you just get over it for God's sake. <laughs> neurotypical, touchy feely, empathetic, group herd minded, occasion bullying, and competitive weirdos. Now, I put that in to be kind to everyone. I could have finished with another few terms. That's, that's the residue of bullying. Uh, I see a little monkey. You've been over that. <laughs> right. The skin cube is something I'm not including. Each side has a command on it. I roll it every now and again through the show. For example, lights too bright. Everyone feel the lights are too bright. Aren't those lights too bright? Horrible. Yeah. Make a sudden noise. Meh. Yeah? You've got the sudden noises you really love. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, come on. You've got to have something in your life you like to do. It's just you. You found out about this and finished. You know. I used to do this. I was about 12. We call them nervous ticks. Yeah. I never thought I'd stand on the bloody the stage doing them. But this is what it's like. Okay, here to express a specific feeling, tell everyone else about your obsession. Mine's autism. <laughs> Get over that. Did you see what was wrong with the last slide? Ah, attention to detail. Yeah, it's all over the place. It needs to be linear, systematic, and ordered. See, you missed that one. <laughs> right, what are Aspies? It's not a guy thing. That's Dr. Temple Grandin, obviously, in awe of meeting me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they say that the ratio, it's got down to like four men to every woman is autistic. No, it's just the, the women have got better coping skills. <laughs> More like 50-50. You can never tell who's autistic. If you can do all the neurotypical things and you can, you know, do the one thing forever really well, like being, for example, an extraordinarily emotionally positive grandmother who has always had huge amounts of energy, like the one I had on my mother's side, that was absolutely adored. So what is regarded by most people as both weird, peculiar, not like normal people, and having a lot of straight ideas about <laughs> spaceship, maybe the other is autistic. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel comfortable with walking through a park? Consider. <laughs> 